this month we're talking about faith. So, you know, being a Christian for a while, being a Christian for a while, I've had the opportunity to think through a lot of the concepts that has to do with Christianity and our faith. So one of the things, so this morning I'm talking to you about what to, I'm talking to you this morning about how to deal when life is out of control. What do you do when life is out of control? What do you do when life is out of control? And where is this coming from? Um, if you're a new Christian and you hear about prayer, fasting, and faith, you are very excited. You're like, oh, praise God. Let me fast. Let me pray. Let me do this. But as you grow older in Christianity, you'll find out that most times, the older Christians are not very excited about prayer, about fasting, about sacrificial giving, about all those kind of things. And the reason is simple because there was a phase in their life where they were practicing those things consistently and the results they wanted to see did not happen and they just kind of pull away. So how do you deal when life is out of control? This is what I'm going to say to you. So when you want a change, change is going to come from two things from the right belief system and the right actions change is going to come from two things from the right belief system and the right action people that need a change do very now notice this people that need changes do very little about the changes they want or do things that are extremely ineffective let me explain that to you when i have when i want to talk to singles and i think i can provide singles context that can help them get married and i advertise a singles conference guess the people that do attend the people that are really single and need it and do attend it when we talk about want to help people financially guess who does not have money to attend such things the person that really needs the money it's amazing this is just this is very funny i've seen it all all time so i've seen that people that need something are not able to accurately accurately just go for what they need and you know and the reason why is that they have all the excuses in their mind so we have a single seminar online and or we have one in the physical space or i say that all the singles will have a picnic we want you to meet one another guess those that will not come those that really need and are desperate and before you judge them and say that you know why don't they come you know guess the person that eats a lot of junk food the person that's trying to lose weight and the doctor has warned not to eat junk food that's the person that eats a lot of junk food the person that is slim that should not be watching his weight he's so conscious about what they eat but the other person that is watching his weight is the one that's doing it and the reason why i'm saying so is this as human beings everybody look up here we gravitate towards what is familiar not what is effective that's a powerful that's powerful as human beings we gravitate towards what is familiar not what is effective what does that mean so and i've said this before but i will say it again so let me give an example so someone knows he needs capital for business but is not able to save is keep spending the money the way he used to spend it the reason why is that not that he doesn't want to save the reason why he keeps spending the money is that that is what is familiar to if you're going to have lasting change you have to change what you're familiar to change into something else for example please look at me if you came from a divorced family the likelihood you'll be divorced is very high if you came for a very poor family the likelihood that you'll be poor is very high if you came for a family where diabetes or high blood pressure run in that family the likelihood you have it is very high but it's not a life sentence just because you know that you can construct something else to change your reality that's what i'm going to today that's what i'm going to today so what do you do when life is out of control what do you do when life is out of control let's turn in our bibles so after, so, so why do people get to a place maybe that's, i will start with this you know why do people get to a place in their lives and they just get to a place where they are just tired this is where i say it after experiencing series of setback people think and believe that they are genuinely helpless and they stop actively trying to believe for a change and i'll give an example there are people that prayed and prayed and prayed for a job they prayed for a job for one or two years space and after doing it consistently they just genuinely give up there are girls that have really prayed that they will enter into a marital destiny and after doing it for one year they just genuinely give up 
this is a concept you know it was discovered in the even in science it was discovered there it was discovered in 1960 it's called the concept of lend helplessness what is lend helplessness nobody is born helpless but as you grow and you have experiences you come to a place where you feel as if there's nothing i can do about myself there's nothing i can do about my goals there's nothing i can do that can make a vital change so there are people that come to church they still pray but they don't really believe that god will answer their prayers because it's just activity to them someone says is that possible let me give you a biblical example the bible says when peter was in prison all the people in the early church gathered in the house of a woman and they were praying for the release of peter there was a little girl what's her name rhoda what is it rhoda okay it was rhoda the bible says as they were praying rhoda was praying close to the door why was she praying close to the door because she was believing that if we pray and god will answer peter will be somewhere coming towards this house right now that let me be close to the door so i can open the door for her the other people were praying they were religious they were praying they were coming to church, they were sowing they were fasting and this is what it is because if you don't understand this thing sometimes you will think that god is not fair because you will not understand how someone can come to church fast pray and do all of these things and there is no result it's not everything we can practically explain but some of them we can explain so as rhoda was praying rhoda heard the voice of peter at the door instead of him to open the door with joy she ran into the prayers stop the prayers and say guys let's stop praying they say why he said peter is at the door do you know what they told her they said you are mad they were praying that peter should be released the result of their prayer happened they say you are crazy meaning that they were just talking there was no prayer in their heart and that's why when it comes to christianity you must be careful a lot of people come to church a lot of people are fasting and praying but all those things is with the mouth it's not deeply rooted in their spirit last month i think last no it was in november one of the couples that i've been praying with to have a baby they've been married for six years so we went for a retreat together and as we went for the retreat i mean we we're going for the morning session and as we went i just looked at him i said so how far with the baby what's going on right now so as i spoke to him you know what i could see that although he was fasting and praying that he practically did not have faith for what he was believing for for as we're talking when i noticed it i led him in more conversations and as we discussed he himself came to that conclusion that he never knew he had faith let me tell you how it said so i asked him about once i noticed i i noticed it i said wow so i asked him about his business i said this business is very risky oh. if you lose it what will happen so i said pastor if i lose it i'll grow it again so what i could see the attitude i said hey what about the issue with baby with your wife and he was excited i spoke about business his face just dropped he said ah. <laughs> there was a way he took a deep breath when he did that i asked him i said did you notice your reaction your faith that your business would do well is so high your faith that you and your wife will have a child is so low that was why as soon as i spoke about your business you were excited and full of faith as soon as i spoke about you getting pregnant your face fell radically it came to see me last week he said pastor thank you i never thought in my entire life that I was not in faith the reason why this is not difficult is this what people call prayer and faith is their own definition it's not the bible definition and it's very subjective to them so someone will say to you like i'm believing god for a healing i'm believing god for a husband i'm believing god for a child i'm believing god for a change when you begin to engage them you will understand that what they call faith is actually presumption and those things have no place in the realm of the spirit and that's why knowledge is powerful because the more you learn the more you know the more you practice the more you know the more you know so why am i saying this to you so this is what happens to people when they have experienced a lot of setback and i know you are here so you're listening to me you've tried and tried and tried on your immigration issue you have tried and tried and tried to find your place your, yourself in a relationship where you are genuinely loved you've tried and tried to break financial limits you've tried three four times and it has not worked the, the listen this is learn helplessness when you try for a long time this is what your emotion does to help you because your emotion doesn't want to be hurt your emotion produces an a 
a mechanism is an emotional mechanism that says don't engage in this thing because if you engage in this thing you'll be hurt that's why when people pray they are no longer specific in prayer because most times when they were specific in before their prayer was dashed so over time we learned what i call we learned helplessness and let me say something to you as a country the same thing you know when i thought about the answers yesterday and someone said pastor i didn't talk about it the reason why is this there are some things i don't want to i don't like the way it turned out by the time the end starts finished what we didn't have we got something that we didn't have before that was negative nigerians became helpless all of you that night that week the the thought of people migrating abroad skyrocketed that week because there was a helplessness that came and of course i have my i have my perspective because once you're not very strategic about something and there's an interception of things it can turn the other way there was a helplessness that came with it so i'm saying to you here you're coming to church but deep down when you have there's a helplessness let's look at the bible john chapter 5 verse 1 and we're going to read a couple of stories maybe before we go to that let's look at maybe um proverbs chapter 13 verse 12 something that can stay us up in this way proverbs chapter 13 verse 12 the bible says hope the fat makes the heart sick it says hope the fat did you see that when you are expecting and expecting and expecting the financial breakthrough after some time your heart becomes sick when you are praying and praying and praying for that child after some time your heart becomes sick when you are praying and praying for that job after some time your heart becomes sick it's not as though you don't want to have faith but you have what i call a faith wound what a faith wound it's a damage on your soul and heart that makes you incapable to believe god for and the reason why is that because of what has happened in the past it's just difficult to believe god how many of you know what i'm talking about now wave your hands if you do know please if you do not wave your hands um, I, I don't i i want just okay that's good so let's turn to john chapter 5 john chapter 5 verse 1 the bible says there was a fifth of the jews and jesus went to jerusalem now there is a jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which in the hebrew tongue is called bethesda having five porches verse 3 in this lay a great multitude of impotent folks impotent folks means people that their body parts were not working he has no power to work of the blind of the hurt of the withered waiting for the moving of the water why were they waiting for the moving of the water for an angel went down at a certain season and troubled the water another word is to stir the water and whosoever stepped whosoever after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease that he had just that alone is a sermon of his own but let's leave it alone for now verse 5 and a certain man was there which had an infirmity or was sick how long was this sick can you tell me please i can't hear you at the back the bible says this person was sick for 30 and 8 years so you think about it most of you that have challenges your challenge is just five years seven years ten years this person had been sick for 30 and eight years so before you judge this man i want you to think of what he's going through some of you are here you are not even up to 38 some of you are 38 exactly this man has been sick for as long as he were born because sometimes in teaching faith and this was something that um pastor was say, saying to us he said sometimes we can teach faith in a way that is not empathic and says why are you having problem you don't have faith you are not responsible if the message of faith should not be thought that way there could be challenges there could be ownership and responsibility but the purpose of the message of faith is to raise you and lift you up so this man has been there for 30 and 8 years the bible says and when jesus saw him lie and knew he had been there for a long time jesus had a revelation he said unto him watch this now he says will thou be made whole the question is this when jesus said to him will thou be made whole what should be the answer it should either be a yes or what or no when people have slipped into lend helplessness when the opportunity comes for them to come out they cannot see it i'm telling you so 
they've been dating people that have broken their hearts this genuine guy comes that says i really want to love you and take care of you they cannot fall in love because they've slipped into lenderplessness they have been doing businesses and they've been losing this particular business shows up where they can gain money they would see in let let, let me read it to you I, i'm not sure if i let me read it to you uh -huh. in lend helplessness people have failed so much and have accepted failure and they refuse to do anything about it even when there are opportunities to do so lend helplessness is the ability to accept and endure negative stimulus and be unwilling to avoid them when it becomes avoidable so this person this person for example there are some of your friends that need a miracle yes or no when you invite them to next level what do they say my bread my brother don't worry about that too I'm, I'm i'm over that when god is ready let him do what he wants to do some of you are here like that i mean i'm not going to kill myself i, I can't come and kill myself what you have done is that you have slipped into a place of helplessness so jesus christ asked him what did jesus christ ask him he said this he says will thou be made whole the man was meant to say yes or no the impotent man answered him and said sir i have no man the question is that the question was simple will you be made whole the lord says do you want to have a baby you said sir they say my fallopian to be blocked is that what is asking you he said do you want to get pregnant you said ah they are no responsible guys he said do you want finance for your business you say sir who will help me the que and the reason why is this when you are in length in when you are in that helpless state you begin to play the blame game you begin to think of your this is what you happens to you when you are in that helpless state you begin to think that your destiny or outcome are out of your control that's what you think that there's nothing i can do about it that there's nothing i can do so because you know there's nothing you can do you do not accept responsibility that's a good time to clap you do not accept responsibility they ask you a question you say because i live abroad that's why things are like this you just do not accept responsibility one of the things you will notice you know one of the things you will notice when people have let um when people have helplessness is this they have this mentality i have no control over my outcome you will hear things like and this is the difference between brilliant students in schools and students that fail brilliant students always say i got this students that fail always say they gave me this yes or no when you see people that brilliant how was it ah i got to be they, they, they always get something because the thinking is that i'm in charge of my outcomes so they say that the ones that fail they never say i got a f they say they gave me f the more you think that what you have is what is given to you that you cannot choose the more the tendency to fail in life will be very high are you here somebody this man jesus just imagine the angel came and troubled the water and the first person that steps in will be healed the person that sent the angel came in person i'm telling you it was not the angel that came the person that sent the angel came in person he looks at you i said do you want to be whole you say i have no man he said what is that what has that have to do with what i'm talking about god says you want to marry they say there are no responsible men my brother you are not looking for man is only one is you are not looking for men it's only one man you're looking for the book of isaiah says god says if i want to bless you and there's nobody around you to bring the resources to you he said i will call a man that will perform my cancer from the far east he said if nobody listen when there was nobody around to bring money to jesus christ because let me tell you something many of you do not understand why the wise men came i'll tell you why the wise men came the wise men came for two reasons number one it was a sign the second reason was this jesus was going to live in egypt joseph and mary did not have the financial substance to sustain themselves in a strange land so what god did was to move wise men that brought gifts so why didn't you use just from jerusalem because in jerusalem people were not hearing so he raised up wise men the Pharisees did not hear the sadducees did not hear how do i know the bible says when the wise men were confused they went to meet the Pharisees and sadducees they were able to accurately tell them where christ would be born they told them where christ will be born but they did not make any effort to go and look for him be careful if you're a church leader you know why 
church leaders are guilty of pointing people in the way of salvation and they're not doing anything about it. I'm telling you, yeah, they, they will, they'll be pointing people there. They don't do anything. That's why be careful of even the church that you speak to because sometimes the church you go to, they, you talk to them, they take the faith that you have away. So they took the resources. They took because, I mean, the story says there were three wise men. I hope you know that that's, that's not true. Bible history said they might be close to 1,000 wise men. The reason why they say there are three wise men is because they gave three kinds of gifts. But three kinds of gifts does not mean there were three wise men. Someone says, is that true? Read your Bible. There were no three wise men. Someone says, all the things you find, I just pay attention to the Bible, that's all. Just like I saw someone say there's Good Friday, Jesus Christ died on Good Friday. Jesus never died on Good Friday, Jesus Christ died on Thursday. Someone says, is that true? The Bible is very clear. He spent three nights in the grave. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, he woke up on Sunday morning. That's all. So there's no Good Friday, there's Good Friday, there's Good Thursday. Praise the Lord. All right, let's keep going. And the reason why I keep doing this is that we're in an age where people are asking questions. People are saying that there are fossils of animals that were seen before time. Where did these animals come from? The people are asking those kind of questions. All right, let's keep going. So the Bible says this. And Jesus saw him lie there and knew he had been there for a long time. And this is the danger. This is the danger. How do people drift in a place of helplessness? It's one thing. They have been on that issue for a long time. That's how they get there. They have been trying to get married for a while. They have been trying to get a job for a while. They have been trying to get a miracle for a while. They have been fasting and praying for a while. So they get to a point where they just give up. And give up is two ways. They can give up and stop wanting that thing. But most of the time, when they are church people, they will keep doing the fasting and prayer. But on the inside, they don't believe anything again. They have said to themselves, God, if you want to do it, do it. If you like, I can't keep myself. And the way faith works, Mark chapter 11, he says, whosoever, faith always starts with a who that can take responsibility. Faith always starts with a who that can take responsibility. So, so the Bible says this, the important man says, sir, I have no man. So the first thing about the state of helplessness is this, number one, you think that no, you don't have control over your outcome. That's what you say. You say, I can't marry myself. I don't have anybody to give me capital. That's, that's how you know you are in a state of helplessness. The second thing you say is this. You actually begin to believe that all your efforts and inputs are not connected to your outcomes. You will hear them say things like, there's no need to try. They are very low in motivation and very low and very passive. They are very low in motivation and very passive. So you will see, you will see these ladies that need to get married. Instead of them to put in more effort to be with people, to engage people, they say, I can't keep myself. You know why? Because they are in a helplessness state, they begin to withdraw. I will give an example. Have you seen someone that is struggling with a temptation or an addiction? Maybe it's a nicotine addiction. Maybe it's masturbation. Maybe it's women. You have tried and tried and tried to break away from women. You know, one guy, I was I were having cell meeting. And one guy said, Pastor, let's just be honest here. I've been a Christian for 15 years. There's no sin I commit more than adultery. He said, I fasted 40 days for God to take it away. I'm looking for the man of God that will lay hands on me and it will come out of my system. I said, well, ad addictions are not broken by laying of hands. That's the truth. That's not how you break addiction because addiction affects two areas, your spirit and your soul. And you don't cast out things from the soul. Your soul is being renewed. So you can cast out the influence from your spirit, but you cannot cast out things from the soul. But you will not, so that guy has gone into a place, he said, I just can't help myself. He said, if I just see a woman. See, how did he come to that conclusion? Because there have been several attempts to come out of that addiction but because he could not find a breakthrough what happened to him he just broke down and that's what many people are many of you have said that i'm i'm meant to be average because you have made critical steps to advance but you find yourself breaking down many of us say i'm telling you the truth this is what happens and even me as a pastor pastor is here when this was starting we we're having prayer meetings in what's that, that hotel YJ Hotel. And is it three or six months where six every, every week? Six for how long? Three or six months? Six months. No matter what we did, we were six 
Every, every, every week. Pastor, you called me one day and said, Pastor Balaji, you know what? The way this thing is going, you know, just as a chartered accountant with a lot of experience in consulting, let's look at the past. It didn't say that way. He said, let's look at the past and forecast the future. If in six months we have been six, what will be when the church starts? I said, and it was a very smart suggestion. Because what had happened was that because both of us will sit down together and make concrete plans on how to grow the team. So we'll say, you know what? We're going to break this six. This, this weekend. How do we break it? I'll say, let's invite three people. You, you take one, I take two. We'll invite three people. The same way we invite three people, three people will not come. So one day, after doing that for a long time, I said, I know what, what I'll do. At least first day, I'm there. Let's invite five new people. Like, no, four new. At least two of us will be there. That day, Pastor, it wasn't KPMG. He had to go to Portacot. Then the others did not come. The remaining five came. We came back to six. I'm only saying to you because there's, at that time, I could have thought that this is why some of you think you are cursed. I could have said, that's it. I could have said, that's it. So when this man said there's no man to help me, you look at that's in the responsible, irresponsible action and um, comment. But it's not irresponsible because for the many years he's been there, he's been making concrete attempts to get into the water when the angel comes. But some will go ahead of him. He's been making concrete attempts to expand the business, but something will shut him down. He's been making concrete attempts to expand his finance. Something will shut him down. He's been making concrete attempts to get married, to buy the house. Something will shut him down. Until the time came. When it began, watch this now. When it started, it was making concrete attempt to move forward. Something shuts him down. Then a time came, he began to sit down by the well and not making concrete attempts again. And that's where many people are. They begin to come to church, they begin to know Jesus Christ, but there's no concrete attempt towards what they are. There's no concrete attempt. They don't believe for the pregnancy again. They don't believe for the change of job. They don't believe for the finances. They, they, and some of them don't have concrete attempts. Some of them will just readjust their goal and settle. So they have a tendency to do 10 billion in a year. They say, you know what? I'm not going to kill myself. 350 million naira is okay. Let me stay with that. Listen to me. Refuse to settle. <laughs> Glory to God. The Bible says, and the important man says, sir, I have no man. So the first thing that happens when people have the helplessness is that number one, they say that they have no control over their, um, their outcome, you know, and you see that in the case of the um, prodigal bro son's brother. See the prodigal son, his brother. The brother, when he came, when he saw the party, he always behaved as if he had no outcome. He was a son, but was helpless. The father said, you can take any sheep. He said, oh, I didn't know I can take any sheep because he was helpless. The second thing you will notice is this. They believe that their efforts and, and inputs are not connected to their outcomes or success. So what do they do? They don't, there's no need to try. So when other people are aspiring to put in more CVs, work at their finances, they never do that. The next thing is that, they, the next thing also is that there's a lot of low self-confidence. What does that mean? So because there's a lot of low self-confidence, you can find them, they are not consistent in those activities. And the way success is, you have to be consistent to have results. I'm telling you, anybody that's built anything significant, watch them, they were at it for some time. And what helps you get at it is that you believe in your heart that this will break through. That's what it is. You believe in your heart that this will break through. The other thing is this. The other thing is this. So the other thing which is very bad is this. They begin self-sabotage behavior, which is the worst one. They don't only, um, they don't only hold back themselves. They begin behaviors that self-sabotage themselves. Have you seen couples that marry and have marital problems? And the husband begins to do things that will, will destroy the marriage. And the reason why is that he has entered into a place of helplessness. All of a sudden, he comes back home. And when he comes back home, he stays for one day, goes for four days. And he will tell you, that's the way I'm solving my mental problem. All of a sudden, you see a girl that is getting, he's trying to get married. And the girl says, oh, no, 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 I don't use makeup. I don't, I don't do anything. No. I beg anybody else to marry me, you should come to my house and come and for my marry me. And it, is that how it works? 
You don't like trying to raise finance for business. We just say that, please, I cannot do anything about my, my business, this and this and this. I'm telling you. You say, do you have books for business? I, I, I can't come and keep myself. I've been doing proposal, proposal, proposal. I didn't say anything. So right now, I don't know proposals again. Anybody that wants to help my best, just come and give me money. Is that right? Is that how it works? You say, have, where, where have you sent your CV in 2021? I'm tired of sending CV. You know how many CV I've sent? In 2020, I sent 500. In 2019, I sent 2,000. I'm tired of sending CV. So you begin a pattern of behavior that is self-sabotage. Glory to God. The Bible says, the man says, I have no man. So what pattern is it here? He began a blame game. He began to blame other people for what is responsibility. What did Jesus Christ say to him? Verse 8, the Bible says, and Jesus, so in verse 7, this man began to claim that the reason why I was not successful was I had no man and other people were his problems. So one say, why are you not growing? He says, the church is the church, that's why I'm not growing. He say, why are you not growing? He says, the corona, that's why I'm not growing. Why are you not prospering? It's coronavirus, that's why I'm not prospering. Why are you not prospering? His ancestors are not prospering. Why are you not prospering? It's Nigeria that's not looking prosper. Some of us are staying here, going nowhere, and we're going to do well. When you change our money from Naira to dollar, it will still be more than people that work abroad. Praise God. Some will need to move abroad, but some of us are not moving abroad. So, we are not staying here. You know, we are not settling. Some people, they are staying in Nigeria because they cannot get out. Mm -mm. We are not settling. We are saying that we are like the tree planted by the rivers of water. That bears its fruit in season. We don't settle with flourish, sir. Some people join next level prayer. One or two weeks, I'm tired. That's the thing. For you to have results, there must be consistency. Everything works with consistency. That's the problem with mitral problems. A mitral problem, you solve one, you solve the second one, you break down. No, sir. If you want to solve a mitral problem, there must be consistency. I was reading about the principle of marketing. Marketing says that for you to get, sometimes you think some things are spiritual, and it's not. For you to get the results that you want, you must market the person, you must go to about seven people before you get one prospective client. Just a powerful principle of marketing. When we started Next Level Prayer, I don't know if you were aware that for a long time we were between 150 and 250. And I remember when one of our staff spoke to me about say, Pastor Balaji, this is so embarrassing. Let's just pack it up because nobody's even joining the prayers. I said, leave me alone. It's not about people. Let me be leading my prayer. Last Friday, we were 25,000 people on Next Level Prayer. <laughs> the testimonies I've received from Next Level now is close, is over 5,000 testimonies. The lady that helps with the testimony says, Pastor Balaji, the testimonies are overwhelming. So, you, you've been trying to toast women, they shut you down, shut you down, shut you down, shut you down. You now say, all, of, all women are the same. You have entered in your placeless because you are all of a sudden blaming people for your outcome. All of a sudden, Nigeria is a problem. Can you see what you're saying right now? And I'm saying so because this is what we learn as a nation. Listen to me, everybody. There is no country in this world that the reason why his members or his citizens are rich is called the country country have enablers i know that but in those even in america you will see beggars i mean i go to america often you will see beggars on the road this guy has blue passports and he's asking for one penny you'll be like what if i could mistakenly just get a blue passport He's asking you tourists. So look at you. You served in church as an usher. You served here as a soul leader. They said they not do well. And you say, I will never have to be a soul leader again. What you don't understand is this. So you shut it down. You're, because, you say, why do you not say that? Because of my members. They are not responsible. Can you see? You are always saying that the outcome you have is because of them. Listen to me. The people that do well in life, they take responsibility for their lives. And that is where faith starts from. What is faith? I want to begin to take responsibility where I am. I'm not going to leave my destiny in the hands of somebody else. And I'm saying so that with all this COVID, with all this COVID, there will be a lot of breakthroughs. With all this COVID, there will be a lot of pressures. Which one are you going to settle for? Let me ask a question here. How many of you have prayed more in the last 60 days? Hands up. Just put your hands up, please. Just put your hands up. Just wave it at me, please. Did you see that? Some people say COVID took them from God. Some people say COVID that may be spiritual. It's not COVID. It's your response towards COVID. (laughs) 
Someone says, Pastor, how would they even notice us now? When all we used to go out at this, we'll see boys that can marry us. He said, how would they notice us? The people can never notice us again. That's what you're saying. Some people are saying that this is the best thing. At least the boys in my estate are now paying attention. Because formerly they will go out, go out, go out, go out, go out. Now we are all here. They are not discovered there are beautiful girls in the estate. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. So, verse 8. What did Jesus Christ say to him? Number 1. Jesus said unto him. This is what Jesus Christ said. He said, rise. What did he mean by rise? Rise is a physical word to get up. But that was not just what he meant. He said, the first thing is that you've laid down for too long. Let your thinking stand up. Let your thinking stand up. He said, your thinking has been flat to the ground. Your thinking has been paralyzed. You can't see the thing growing. You can't see the thing excelling. He said, rise. Lady, rise. Businessman, rise rise stand up sir stand up rise rise he said rise then the next thing he said is this he said take up your bed and walk which is very instructive what does take up your bed mean the mentality and support system that has crippled you carry them and do without them he said take up because what was the bed the bed was that thing it was a support system some of you it's your uncle because my uncle has not done this my brother has not done this he said rise he said take up your bed he said carry that mentality that's your support system there's a emotional support system that holds you back there is a mental support system that holds you back there are things you know maybe validation that holds you back he said that thing they used to rely on that used to keep in that helpless state he said carry it What do you do? The first thing is this. If you want to overcome, because this is the teaching of faith, the first thing you have to do is that you have to change your perspective. How do you change your perspective? Faith starts with me taking responsibility for change. Listen to me. Faith doesn't say there's no mountain. Faith says I can move the mountain. Faith doesn't say there's no challenge. Faith says I can change the challenge. Faith doesn't say there's no trouble. Faith says I can trouble my troubles. That's what faith says. Faith is not saying that it will be easy. Faith says I can turn it around. Is that what your faith is saying or your faith is saying something else? You need to change your perspective. And listen, you need to change your perspective especially about setbacks. And this thing about helplessness is what most of us learned as young. We learned it as a child. We learned it from home. Because sometimes you will hear something like, you know, I did very well in mathematics. But looking back, it was not because I loved mathematics. It was because I had a teacher that believed in me and I loved so much. Anywhere you love the teacher, you do well in the subject. Yes or no? You know why? Your love for that teacher will help you increase inputs. And that will bring results. So you will not conclude without training. Say, I'm good in this subject. You are not good in any subject, sir. Nobody is born with a singing voice. Or without a singing voice. The people that sing, the reason why they sing is that from when they were young, they began to train them to sing. They had exposures where they learned that. When I said preaching, I mean, they will tell you, my voice was terribly, I could not even sing on the key. But a time came, I'm like, okay, let me try to learn this. So you have to change your perspective. So, and if you're not in church last week, you have to go back online and watch the message on perspective. Because the perspective is this, is this a setback or is this a setup? Is this a failure or is this a lesson? There's a perspective. The second thing you have to do is this. The second thing you have to do is this. Look at that man. If he realized, have a look up here. Have a look here. The man at the pool. If he realized that everybody at this pool will be healed by an angel, I will be healed by the person that sends the angel. His response towards waiting will be different. Is that not true? Because everybody had a lower manifestation. That's what happened. Everybody had a lower manifestation. It was only him that had a superior manifestation. That Jesus Christ will come, single me out and heal me. Glory to God. The second thing is this. Be very clear about what you desire. Most people are clear about what they don't want. But they are not clear about what they want. I ask people all the time, what do you want? Say that, ah, I just hate this and this and this. I say, sir, what do you want? One time a couple came to me. So I told the wife, 
what they call it i said what do you want he said, i just like the way it treats me i said i know what do you want is it just imagine the way he talks to me he said what do you want he said i can't even believe you're asking me i said what do you want and unfortunately it's whatsoever you desire that you receive what do you desire a lot of people are clear about what they don't want but a lot of people are not clear about what they want that's why jesus christ says jesus asked the man he says do you want to walk he said i have no man is that what he's asking you my brother my sister what do you want sometimes even the things you say you want you don't want it because what you say you want is still a means to something else many of you don't want a job or a business it's money that you want is it not true let's just call the race and point to the money and say this money i want praise god because what you are praying for might be a long route towards the money glory to god the third thing is this which is very important tame your feelings and expectations why everybody is everybody makes decisions on their feeling and that's what the bible says we walk by faith and not by sight you are not your feelings so don't make decision based on your feelings why you are a faith man we walk by faith and not by sight anybody that responds to his feeling 100 percent will always fail in life e.g esau esau ate the porridge because he felt hungry he said what is my bed right many of you wake up on the sunday and say i don't feel like going to church what does that mean it doesn't mean anything to me he said, i don't feel like going. i don't feel like praying it's not a feeling it's a decision so i am not my feeling my feeling or my emotion does not tell me what to do they are they belong to me i instruct them on how to support my goals so your feeling says you're a failure you still tell your feeling that are you stupid you have no respect because i choose to accommodate you in my life you had the audacity to tell me you're in failure glory Ro. praise god because the major thing is this once you feel wrong you will do wrong oh my god once you feel wrong you will do wrong once you feel negative you will do negative you have no choice you can't help yourself so how do you tell me your feeling we walk by faith and not by sight as i was coming here there was a way i felt yesterday you know my voice everything and the voice was like ah, you know it's not be a good message it's not be powerful meanwhile this is a great message isn't it a great message this is not the powerful you know because of how you feel and i just knelt down and i said father i thank you because number one i walk by faith and not by sight i said number two i said number two is this the bible says i'm an able minister of the new testament i went on my knees and prayed i said father i believe it that's what i believe and i'm going for to it look at it now we're here it's mess it's powerful it's life changing your life is changed by the message when i was coming to church this morning satan said uh you know it's valentine's day if people have traveled they will not come to church i said satan that's the thing even if they don't come to church the power of the holy ghost is strong enough to pull people that have never been to church inside the church look down look at the back this first service the place is blocked people are in sin overflow but the thing is that the moment you start accepting those emotions and feelings because this is it once you accept the emotions the feelings the belief as a man thinketh or feels in his heart so it will be so once you accept those things the manifestations of those things will happen you say man you know men will always cheat your husband will cheat I cannot help it. You are the prophet I prophesied. You said, you know you can't succeed in Nigeria. You will not. You said it. But I know one thing. That I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bears its fruit in season. Hallelujah. Are you blessed today? Yes. Just, yeah. <laughs> Glory to God just imagine as a pastor i came to you and i said that this year we're trying to make 1000 people that end between 50 and between 100 thousand less than that to one to two fifty thousand. how does a pastor think like that it th the, the only thing i can say so is because of the way i think that i'm anointed our church is a place of transformation you can't come in here poor and leave if you can do what we're telling you not that you can attend praise god let's stand up and pray